Hi everyone, welcome to the seventh video in the Realistic FPS game series. In this video, we will start building our fire event. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and like the video. If you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee, link in the description. If you have anything in mind, just comment down below. And you can download this tutorials asset by clicking on the link in the description. Before we start, we will fix two mistakes I've made in previous videos. The first one is a shadow glitch. To fix it, we will go to our weapon underscore base BP. Then click on weapon underscore mesh and search for cast. Then disable the cast shadow option. And the second one is that we've forgotten to set blend times for fp underscore ps underscore firelast underscore montage. So we will just set the blend in to 0 and the blend out to 0 0.1. So let's start by understanding how fire event works. First, we have our fire event. And when we trigger this function, we first check if we have enough ammo. And also, if we only have one bullet, we play a different animation on our weapon. So the slider gets stuck when our weapon gets empty. Then we play a sound at our weapon's location. So if we have enough ammo, we play the fire sound. And if we don't have enough ammo, we just play the empty sound. We will import these sounds in this tutorial. Then we play the animation montage we've imported in the previous videos. And it also triggers the animations of our weapon too. After that, we create a line trace. Line traces are like lasers, and we calculate our bullet's functions with this laser. If it hits or overlaps with something, we can know it from this line trace. Then we play the camera shake to make the gameplay more realistic, and we will create the camera shake in this video. Then we add a procedural recoil to our character, but we will do it in the next video. So this is it for the fire event. I just wanted to explain it before creating it. It's much easier to understand the logic in this way, but I will explain it with blueprints too. Don't worry, so let's start creating it. Go to the AM1911 inches folder, create a new folder called audio and open it up. Then import the audio files I've shared in the description. Create a folder called files and move the files into that folder. Then create another folder called queues and open it up. Right click audio and select sound queue. Name it Q underscore M 1911 underscore fire. Get the fire sound files and drop them into queue. Select them, right click, add a random node and connect. Then set the volume multiplier value to 0.6. Again, do the same things, but now use the empty sounds and change the name of the queue to Q underscore M1911 underscore empty. Go to the first person folder, create a new folder called camera shake and open it up. Then right click, select blueprint, search for camera shake and select legacy camera shake. Name it CS underscore fire. Open it up, close these tabs and set the values as shown in the video. Now, open up the weapon base BP, 
Then we will delete the start fire and stop fire functions. It's my fault. We should have created events, not functions. So we will create start fire and stop fire events and replace them with the functions. Don't forget to change the stop fire event in the fire event in first person BP. Back to weapon BP, create two new integer variables called current ammo and mag size. Then set the current ammo to mag size in event begin play and set the mag size default value to 15. Then get the current ammo, subtract one from it and check if it is bigger than zero. Add a play sound at location node. Create a sound underscore Q variable called fire sound. And set its default value to QM1911 fire. Then create another sound underscore Q variable called empty sound and set its default value to QM1911 empty. Connect the fire sound to the sound input and get the actor's location for location input. Then add a play montage node. Get our player ref, then get the first person mesh from it and connect to play montage. Go to the first person folder, create a folder called structures and open it up. Then right click blueprint and select structure and name it S underscore weapon montages. Name the first variable fire montage and set the type to anim montage. Then create three same type variables called fire last montage. Reload montage and reload not full montage. Create a variable in weapon BP called anim montages and set its type to the structure we've created. Then set its default value as shown in the video. Get the anim montages variable, split it into pins and connect the first one to montage to play. Then decrease the current ammo by one. From the false pin, add another branch to check if the remaining ammo equals zero. Play sound at the same location and use the same sound. Then add a play montage node and use the same skeletal mesh. But now select the second montage from the variable. 
Then connect the play node to the AMO set node. From the false pin again, play a sound at the same location, but this time use the empty sound. Lastly, call the stop fire event. Then go to ABP. And before the local to component node, add a slot node and set the slot to arms. You can see our montages are working fine. Now we will implement the firing system, line tray system, but first we need to create a socket at our pistol's muzzle location. And we will use this location as the spawn point of the bullet. So if you are using your own weapon, you need to set your owns to the muzzle location. So open up the M1911 mesh. Right click on the root, add socket and name it muzzle. Set its location as shown in the video. Go back to the weapon base and create a function called fire hit scan. Add a boolean input called draw debug. Then get the player ref. Get the first person camera. And get the location and forward vector of it. Multiply the forward vector with the range variable. Add a add node and connect B to the multiply node. Then add a line trace by channel node and connect the pins as shown. For the ignore, make an array and add self and player ref variables to it. Break the out hit output and create another line trace by channel node. For the start location, get our weapon mesh, then get the location of the muzzle socket. For the end location, add a select node and connect the pins as shown. Now we will use the input variable. So get the draw debug boolean, then add a select node for the draw debug input. Connect the pins and set the options as shown. We will implement the muzzle flash and hit effect systems after this node in the next videos. But for now, we are just going to skip that part. We get the location of the camera and we get the location ahead of the camera. Then we create a line trace from the camera to the front location. Then we create a fake line trace that starts from our weapon and ends at the old line trace's hit or end location. I call it fake because we will use the first one's hit results when we calculate the hit effect. Go back to the weapon base, call the fire hit scan event and enable the debug for testing purposes. And lastly, Get the player ref and its location. 
add a play world camera shake node, connect the pins as shown, set the outer radius to 100 and set the shake to CS underscore fire. As I've explained in the first part, we first check the ammo, then play the sound, then play the montage, then create the line trace and play the camera shake. So as you can see, our firing system looks so good. All animations, sounds and camera shake work fine. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. If you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee, link in the description. If you have anything in mind, just comment down below. See you in the next videos.